Many children and teenagers having a mental health crisis end up in hospital emergency rooms because there's nowhere else to go for help. And now a new study shows they often don't get professional help after they leave there. Some just land back in the ER again. Research out this month found more than one quarter of children return to the hospital within six months. Some return within a week. National investigative correspondent Stephen Stock and his team visited the front lines where medical staff, parents, and kids are dealing with what has often become a life or death crisis. And you should know this story includes frank conversations about the mental health crisis that for some might be difficult to hear. Michaela shares her story. Well, you're just kind of left alone. Not because of where she is at age 20. It kind of feels hopeless. But because of where she was just a couple of years ago. For me, I would be crying out for help. Inside a hospital emergency room in Colorado for the eighth time suffering a mental health crisis. It wouldn't happen until, until I came to a point where it was too late. Michaela ended up in the ERs because she was suicidal or in acute crisis. The first time when she was 12. She now considers herself a survivor. It definitely made me stronger. I was in the ER for 19 days. Daniel considers himself a survivor too. The ER is inhumane and not the right place to go for mental health. All right, let me show you the oldest one. Daniel shared his story after a mental health crisis landed him in a Boston ER when he was 17. He's been in the ER three different times in the last year alone. And they don't get what they need. They are still trying to find the help they need, and it's so damn difficult. So many stories we heard. Different journeys, one problem. Young people suffering a mental health crisis ending up in the last place doctors think they should. This is such a big problem around the country. This is the front lines now on treating mental health among juveniles is the emergency department. It is not an ideal place to be. In January, we spent a day with Dr. Kevin Carney, head of the ER at Children's Hospital Colorado. This morning when I came in, we had uh, five patients who came in overnight into the emergency department for mental health reason. Children's Hospital Colorado says last year system-wide, they saw an average of 554 children every month in their ER with mental health issues. How's there to keep them safe? But where the children got little to no treatment. The psyche, hoping I could check bed status for. Staff members spend hours every day calling around Colorado. No beds today. Thank you. Looking for places where kids can get treatment. Maybe across the whole system, four or five beds in the whole state. Today. Okay, thank you. And I have okay. eight waiting for beds already. Okay, no beds today. And I have four more to be seen today, and it's only new. Which is why so many children wait hours, days, even weeks inside the ER. We've seen a significant rise. We found a similar crisis at Cook Children's Hospital in Fort Worth, Texas. But we're seeing even younger and younger kids, eight and nine year olds, that are expressing that they want to hurt themselves, that they want to die. Over the last two years, they've seen an average of 330 kids a month with mental health issues in their ER. So we're in one of our psych safe rooms. Kids in Fort Worth and across the country wait in ER rooms like this one, stripped down for their protection. They prevent you from being able to harm yourself. We've had length of stays over 36 hours in this room. You feel terrible for the families when they're trapped here for hours, days on end trying to find placement. More than 60% of youth with major depression don't receive any mental health treatment. Our investigation found 41 states with a severe shortage of child psychiatrists. We've got to go to where folks are. The person in charge of this? Health and Human Services Secretary Javier Becerra. We met with him in Dallas during a panel with young black men. Um, I was actually suicidal my senior year of high school. Because when people don't feel safe, people don't talk, people don't speak, people don't say anything, and they just deal with it. That's why you have people committing suicide. That's why you have people turning to drugs and alcohol, because they don't know where else to go. They're crying out. It starts with the youth. Shame on us that we haven't prepared. Is that acceptable that we've got young people in ERs all over with mental health issues all over this country? No, oh, it's, it's not acceptable. It's not care. It's, it's housing them. Why hasn't the federal government done more until now? It's, it's, it's pretty simple. Money. We checked. 
and the Biden administration has dedicated more money to juvenile mental health than previous administrations. One billion dollars over the next five years to pay for things like medical school to increase the number of mental health specialists and a goal of doubling counselors in schools. But critics say those one-time grants are short-term answers. Does Congress need to step up and treat this as a continuing problem that they need to fund better? Absolutely. And that's why President Biden called this part of his unity agenda. This is something where red or blue, Republican or Democrat, we all know someone who needs help. Our kids need us to be there for them. You don't always see this kind of emotion from a school superintendent. But mental health is such a priority for Chris Smith and his Denver area community that they voted for a $15 million bond to build a combination mental health treatment center and school due to open this fall. Intensive care and classrooms where kids can slowly transition back to traditional school. This is personal for you. Why? Because I've been impacted by suicide and I've been impacted by mental health. And so we need to do whatever we can to engage and push in and make sure that our kids feel loved, valued, and invested in. Smith admits not every school district can pay for a solution this big. But for him, it's an investment they can't afford not to make. Our kids need to know who they are. Because if they walk into our schools and they feel loved, they feel invested in, and they feel valued, they won't hurt themselves, and they won't hurt others. And according to data analyzed by CBS News, nearly 40% of Pennsylvania counties have a severe shortage of child psychiatrists. Philadelphia County needs 54 more psychiatrists to meet the need. You can review the data in your county just by going to our website, cbsphiladelphia.com. Now, if you or someone you know is in crisis, you can get help from a suicide and crisis lifeline counselor by calling or texting a new three-digit number, 988. And to hear candidly from young people about their struggles with mental health, we are bringing you a powerful documentary to you exclusively. Kids in Crisis will be streaming Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. After that, you can watch it on demand on our website. Just look for Kids in Crisis on our homepage. So important. Very important.